So I'm here with Josh Shockley of PLB Comics, and um, I noticed something very interesting about the comics you have going on here, which is that they're all anthologies. Yes. And um, at least uh, the issue of the fall that I was looking at, it was a series of um, two page or a few more pages stories, all containing the same character. What made you guys think of that idea for your comics? Um, well, initially we liked the idea of working with other artists. Um, some of them we met, some of them we've only talked to online. Um, it seemed to be a good way to kind of, in all honesty, put the books out a lot faster. This is a part-time gig for us, and, and by doing it anthology style, it allows us a chance to play with different storytelling aspects of different styles and just really get a, a nice feel for the character because we wanted to see people's different interpretations of them. Like we write most of the stories ourselves, but I'm always thrilled to see the way everybody draws the ball. It's, it's always a slightly bit different each of you. Yeah, I, I think one of the neat things is, you know, when you take a look at a character like uh, Batman or Spider-Man or whatever, one of the things people talk about is, look at Mark Waid's run, look at, you know, Scott Snyder's run, and instead of having to wait, like, five or six years to see someone else interpret your comic, you've got, you know, either art-wise or a story wise you've got someone else looking at your comics, you know, doing your comics in a different way. Oh, absolutely, and and, and that's that's true. I mean, Batman is, is, is the best example of that, because it's like, everyone has their own take on Batman and it's uh no, for us, we really like working in anthology style. We're very lucky. We work with some really tremendous artists, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. All of our books are kind of fit in that style. We have the Fall, which is a vigilante book, and we have our Vampire Hunter book, Getting Smashed, and then our our Halloween uh, special that we do each year. It's like our annual, and that's that style too. It's kind of short, spooky, self-contained stories. Um, in the next year or so, we're looking at trying a little bit different, going for longer story arcs that are more expansive and continue more. The first couple of issues is just sort of, it's, it's just the first couple of chapters. We're kind of laying the groundwork for things. But we've got a huge story arc coming up in the fall. It's going to be uh, out in the spring probably. It'll kick off like a six issue series that just kind of is all, all there. It's big, big stuff. Sounds like the marketing writes itself. Check out the fall in the spring. There you go, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I noticed the fall was um, black and white. Are they all black and white or some of them color? They're all black and white. Um, uh, we're indie guys, so it helps keep the cost down. It's black and white. But honestly, I kind of like black and white. It, it goes good with gritty books and our books are certainly dark and gritty. Um, we grew up reading Eastman and Laird's Ninja Turtles, which is black and white, and there's something very just, you know, powerful about yeah. that. I mean, I love color, but, yeah. you know, it, it, it's striking in black and white. Yeah, it's not like lack of colors holding back Robert Kirkman, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> or Frank Miller with Sin City. Yeah. Right, so I, the other thing I noticed is The Fall is definitely a mature book. Yes. Are, are all of the books that POV's putting out at the moment mature? Are, are there any all ages or teen or...? We, we have one kids book, um, and, and we did it kind of as a joke, um, but we realized that our friends would come up and, and they come up with their kids, and the kids would be grabbing for the books, and we're like, no, you probably shouldn't read that, it's a little violent, and a little, too much cussing. Um, so we did a kids book because they were like, can you do a kids book so our kids have something to look at so we can buy them something, because if you do a kids book, we'll buy it. So we did a kids book, Jelly Man and Toast, is about a talking jellyfish and his friend Toast, who's a chef in New York City, and they have adventures, and there's word finds in it, and there's little crossword puzzles, and it doubles as a coloring book because it's basically just a little mini comic run on a copy of paper so the kids can color it too. Perfect. So uh, uh, being an indie publisher, there's, there's two important things I've got to ask you. One is, um, how often do the books come out? Um, we try, well, our Halloween book comes out every year, a month before Halloween. We usually try and coincide it with the Baltimore Comic Con. Uh, usually we try and do an issue of the fall every year and an issue of getting some bash. That's about the fastest we, the fastest we can go because right now we're, you know, there's kids and day jobs and all that good stuff. Uh, we're working on getting faster. It's it's an uphill battle though. And the older we get, the harder it's getting to crank more out. But uh, so about three issues a year. That's, okay. Uh, hey, that, that's not bad. Brandon Graham's only doing four issues of uh, multiple warheads a year. So oh, you're, I don't feel too bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're actually pretty much on par. The other question is, 
Besides Baltimore Comic Con or any of the other conventions, where can people get the comics? Uh, we are carried, uh, they can get them through our website, www.plbcomics.com. We are carried locally in our hometown store of Salisbury, Maryland at Fort Mill Phoenix Rising. We are carried uh, at Collector's Corner in Hartford, uh, yeah. and the Bel Air location at Collector's Corner. Oh. So if you don't live in Maryland, here. you're out of luck, sorry. Yeah. No, you can go on their website. And uh, <laughs> the other stores are listed on our website. This is the third day of this long time. My brain is much. So. Do you guys have anything on Comixology or any of the digital distribution? Uh, no, we haven't tackled that yet. Um, uh, it's, it's something we're looking into. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it at all. I just kind of print, printed books are my first love, you know. So I like opening them up. I like the smell and the texture and all that. So we've got to figure out a way we can also do digital so it's right for us. Yeah. I def there's definitely something nice about the fact that your books are very gritty. There's always something nice about like the paper stock and like the way you guys have printed it. It's not a glossy paper, and I think that that adds to it. Uh, you know, I, I'm primarily a digital reader, but I think that there's certain books that just are really awesome when you get them physical instead of digital. So I think I think definitely you know no wrong choice there, and, and um, you know it definitely makes for something that's a whole a whole thing. You know, not just a story. You've got a physical thing too. Um, so uh, thanks for talking to me. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it.